you're having a good day today. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be looking at the account of the prodigal son, the third of the lost parables, if you will. Maybe I should say the three found parables. But anyway, today's hymn is the hymn, God is Calling the Prodigal. God is calling the prodigal, come without delay. Hear, oh, hear him calling, calling now for thee, for thee. Though you've wandered so far from his presence, come today. Hear his loving voice, calling still, calling still. Calling now for thee, calling now for thee. Calling now for thee. Prodigal come, weary prodigal come, calling now for thee, now for thee, calling now for thee. Oh, weary prodigal, weary prodigal come, weary prodigal come. To our passage, Luke 15, a little bit longer. It's the longest of the three parables, so let's read it together. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me, so he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in, therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you, I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother is dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Anyway, I just wanted to see what the next parable was. But back to our account, what points might we make? Well, what, what is this? And there's a multitude of points to be made, but one point that we might simply make, he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Sometimes people have to hit rock bottom before they turn to the Lord or turn back to the Lord. And we do them a great disservice when we do not do the things or not do the things, in a sense, if we enable sin, if we enable them in their sin. And it's a hard thing. Just think about if this father would have been sending money to his son and enabled his prodigal lifestyle, would the son ever have come back? He simply would not have. What, what happens, what needs to happen, and why God allows suffering, I would suggest, is to get us to turn to him or to turn back to him. And that a, a physical suffering led to a spiritual awakening. 
the son came to himself. And so people have to hit rock bottom sometimes. And to be very blunt about it, sometimes we need to let them hit rock bottom. That's hard to do, but it needs to be done. Our second point is from verse 17. When he came to himself, he said, How many of his father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I think one of the points we can make is to talk about free will and that we have the power to choose. We have that power. Not everybody believes that, but I think this parable bears it out. The son had the power to choose. He came to himself, and he chose differently. He chose differently. He had been wasting his life, and he chose differently. Adam and Eve chose you might think about Joshua at the end of his life. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. God commands all to repent. And it is up to us to choose whether we will obey him or not. The prodigal son had chosen at the beginning to leave his father. And now he is choosing to return. So don't let anyone ever tell you, nope, man's not able to choose good. Man can choose good. God gives us the option and God gives us free will. It's up to us whether or not we choose God's good will. Back to our account. One of the common variables, and we've already seen it in the last few, the other son was angry and would not go in. And therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. I would suggest don't take, you don't take a metaphor too far. And you don't take a parable too far. And what I mean by that is there in verse 31, when he said, Son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. Don't carry that too far. What I mean is, okay, he was angry and would not go in. We need, to, we need to think about who the characters are in the parable. You always have to figure out who the characters are. You always have to. The Pharisees are complaining. right? That's how the whole thing starts. They're complaining because Jesus is eating with sinners. The Pharisees and scribes say, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And so he speaks this parable and the other parables as well to them. And so, who are the characters? Who is it who's angry? Oh, well, that's the Pharisees and the scribes. And they would not have fellowship with Jesus because, lo and behold, the sinners are coming home. The tax collectors and the harlots are coming home. Now, are the Pharisees and the scribes going to remain forever? Not if they don't turn to Jesus. And I wanted you to, to see this language. He was angry, Pharisees and scribes, and would not go in. He would not rejoice. That's the commonality between the three parables. He would not rejoice with, frankly, the Lord. He wouldn't do it. And until he's ready to do it, until he's ready to come in and rejoice with the Lord and rejoice with those who are repenting, he's going to remain outside. And it's not, it's not the Father's fault. It's his own fault because he has free will. The, the door was there. The door is Jesus. If you want to be with Jesus, then you're going to have to get over the fact that these people used to be prodigal. You're going to have to get over it. Otherwise, you're out there and you're not coming in. And frankly, you're not going to come in until you're ready to rejoice. And so as you, you think about that idea, and remember, remember the other parables. See, the coin, the, the sheep knows that it's lost, but doesn't know how to come home. 
the coin does not know that it's lost and therefore does not realize it needs to come home. And the son, the prodigal son, realized he was lost and knew how to come home. So he came home. But the other son in the account, he's like that coin. He thought he was safe and secure in-house. No. He's out there and the father's having to come plead with him. The father's coming to look for him. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. Let me put it another way. What does the, sh what does the shepherd go looking for? What does the woman go looking for? Now, the prodigal son, he knew how to come home. Undoubtedly, the father had already pleaded with him not to do what he was doing, but he did it anyway. But now the father is coming out once again. The searcher is coming out, just like the shepherd was a searcher and the woman was a searcher. Now the father is searching and pleading with his other son. I would suggest that's really, who, that's really what this account is about, the other son. Are you going to rejoice over the sinners who repent? Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.